just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your God. Come, now is the time. Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come. One day every tongue will confess you are God. Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come. One day every tongue will confess you are God, one day every knee Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time. Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come. One day every tongue will confess you are God, one day treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come. 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 Just as you are.
Good afternoon. Welcome today as we celebrate the 14th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Presiding over our celebration of the liturgy is Father Ed Grace. The opening refrain is, I will praise your name, my King and my God. Please stand.
Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. To prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred liturgy, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, in the abasement of your Son, you have raised up a fallen world. Fill your faithful with holy joy for those you have, re you have rescued from slavery to sin. You bestow eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Zechariah. Thus says the Lord, Rejoice heartily, O daughter Zion. Shout for joy, O daughter Jerusalem. See, your king shall come to you. A just savior is he, meek and riding on an ass, on a colt, the foal of an ass. He shall banish the chariot from Ephraim and the horses from Jerusalem. The warrior's bow shall be banished and he shall proclaim peace to the nations. His dominion shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, O Lord, and let all the faithful bless you. Let them speak of your might, O Lord, the glory of your A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the Spirit, if only the Spirit of God dwells in you. 
Whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. If the Spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. Consequently, brothers and sisters, we are not debtors to the flesh to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to little ones. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will, all things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke on you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves for my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus tells us today that we should learn from him. The study of theology, frankly, can be highly complex. The wise and the, and the clever devise syllogisms and split hairs and come up with peculiar reasons. But today Jesus also tells us that the, what the wise and the clever cannot quite understand can be known and understood by the little ones, the ordinary sort. How can this be? The scholars bumble and the ordinary ones understand. Jesus tells us, learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart. How do we learn from Jesus? By looking at his life, what did Jesus do? How did Jesus behave? When we examine the life of Jesus, we see he really was meek and humble, generous and kind. Not just that, 
He was this to all, not just to the rich and powerful or, or the important, but to all, even to the poor, the marginal. He was kind and just to both men and women, to both the rich and the poor, to his friends and relations and neighbors, but also to strangers, to foreigners, even to those who might be considered unwelcome, the, the Samaritans, the Romans, the Syrophoenician woman. To all he encountered, Jesus Christ was kind and fair and just and charitable. That is what we learn when we study Jesus. But Jesus today also tells us to take his yoke, his burden on ourselves. What does that mean? It means to imitate Jesus, to strive to live as he did, to be like him, to love God and neighbor as ourself, and to remember most especially that everyone is our neighbor not just those who are like us or agree with us. But having learned what Jesus did and what he wants us to do, why should we bother? He tells us that too, so that we will enjoy eternal rest with him in heaven forever. Today, it is no secret and it should be no surprise that our country is horribly divided, politically, socially, philosophically. It is in desperate need of healing. We can do our small part to bring about this needed healing by taking up the yoke of Jesus Christ, the yoke of imitating Jesus Christ's behavior to treat all we encounter with kindness, courtesy, fairness, and understanding. Imitating Jesus Christ, the meek and humble Jesus Christ, will lead us to eternal rest, which is nice for us, but it will also help bring a small bit of healing to our dreadfully divided country. That is what we can do to help make this country once again a unified country. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. For Christians around the world, 
who are suffering from persecution, that they be kept safe from harm. Let us pray to the Lord. That peace may be proclaimed in our country, both within and without, as we celebrate the anniversary of our independence this weekend. That we will work to bring all, regardless of race, creed, color, or religion, those unalienable rights of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Let us pray to the Lord. That the prosperity of our country may reach the poorest among us, so that the burden of poverty may be lightened for all. Let us pray to the Lord. For those suffering from drug addiction and for their families and loved ones, let us pray to the Lord. For all of us, that we may come to the assistance of others in need, helping to make their yoke easy and their burden light. Let us pray to the Lord. For those communities hit hardest by the coronavirus and for those who care for them, especially in hospitals at their breaking point, that we, in the name of the gospel of light, will do all we can in our daily lives for the protection and care of others with our faith ever in the Lord. We pray to the Lord. For all who suffer from COVID-19 and all serious illnesses, especially all the sick of our parish, we pray to the Lord. And for all our brothers and sisters who have passed, especially Therese Pavlovsky, Fidela Villa, and Lolito Kalenkagen, and all those who have died alone and in silence due to this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Enlighten our burdens through Christ our Lord. My brothers and sisters, pray that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. O Lord, look upon the offerings of the Church and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state. By his suffering, he canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, 
with your servant Francis, our Pope, lays our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. There will be two lines for communion, one for each side of the church. The ushers will send each pew up for communion, starting with the back and moving forward. Please sanitize your hands before receiving. While waiting in the aisle, please be sure and stand on the marked spots on the floor. When you approach the minister, leave your mask on. After receiving the body of Christ in your hand, move to the next marked spot on the floor, about 12 feet away. Once there, Remove your mask and consume the body. 
replace your mask, and then return to your seat.
us pray. O Lord, grant that having been replenished by such great gifts, we may gain the prize of salvation and never cease to praise you through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. We have made a slight adjustment to the registration system for masses. Moving forward, you only need to make one reservation per household. When making your reservation, it will come up as quantity one, where it asks in the comments section, please list the number of persons from your household who will be attending. Thank you so much to everyone who has already purchased their United Parish Program raffle tickets. We are less than 1,000 tickets away from our goal of 3,500 raffle tickets sold. Additional prizes kick in if we meet our goal. Get your tickets today to be eligible for the next early bird drawing. Please visit the parish website, qasparish.org, to purchase raffle tickets, sponsorships, and to see all of the ways you can support the UPP. This one parish annual fundraiser is crucial to meeting our operating budget and supporting all of our ministries and outreach. And this year, we need your support more than ever. No amount of participation is too small. Tickets are also available at the rectory. As we announced last week, beginning this weekend, the 7 o'clock a.m. Mass is scheduled as a drive-in Mass in our parking lot, weather and logistics permitting. This Mass is especially designed for the more vulnerable members of our parish who are not comfortable attending Mass in the Basilica. Everyone who attends this Mass must arrive in a car and remain inside for the duration of the Mass. We encourage you to make a reservation online for your vehicle as capacity is limited. The Mass will be broadcast on a low power FM frequency, which you can hear on your car radio. Communion will be distributed through your open car window. Please use your own hand sanitizer before receiving communion. Please see the parish website for details. At the end of Mass, please remain in your pews. The ushers will release the pews one at a time from the side aisles of the church. Please follow their directions. Everyone will exit the church from the front exits on both sides. In order to move more efficiently while keeping proper distance, we ask that those sitting on the left side of the church exit to the left by the Sacred Heart altar, and those sitting on the right exit to the right by the St. Joseph altar. Once released, we ask that you leave as quickly as possible so that we can get the church cleaned and sanitized. There is no opportunity for private prayer after Mass. Weekly donations can be placed in the baskets at the exits. We continue to encourage online giving at givecentral.org. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.